Hello and welcome to another Waggy's Best Wines and Spirits review. Yeah, nearly forgot. Uh, this review is of Sadler's Peaky Blinder Lager, Craft Lager. Um, 4.1% volume. Fresh pale lager with a smooth citrus hop finish. Um, doesn't really say anything else. Let me try and bring something up on the internet about it. Got it for Christmas. Uh, my wife got it me. Or my daughter. Can't remember who. Um, I must admit, I am very happy with Sadler's. Uh, across their brands, their beer range, got some very good um, beers. Lager. Ah, I should have done that before I put it on. Ah, here we go. So, yeah. Let's have a look, see if there's a review of it. Ah, there is reviews. Right. So, I'll give it a pour. See what it looks like. Again, a brand new beer to me. Most of the beers I've done recently are all brand new, which is great. You know, it's great for me. Uh, it's great when they taste nice. When they don't taste nice, it's not so great, but... Thankfully, most taste nice. Right. So, as you'd expect from a lager, uh, Typical straw slash gold colour, white head, good carbonation in through the centre, really good carbonation, lacing around the outside. <sighs> Not the most inviting aroma. Yeah, the aroma's not quite there for me. I'm just trying to um See if anybody's... Right. I'll go to the official site because nobody else is talking about it properly. I'm getting reviews, but they're not from the... Uh, the reviews of the Black IPA, rather. And the Black IPA is nice. So... Initial taste, not bad. Uh, this, the aroma didn't quite hit it for me there. So, 4.1%, uh, like I said, a crisp, refreshing pale lager that balances the soft, smooth bitterness of British hops with the uplifting pine and citrus notes of Am American Cascade. Tasting notes. Um, oh. Very helpful tasting notes. <laughs> so that's the tasting notes there. And uh, someone's forgot to write write in the in the slots what they are. So not overly helpful. Ah, oh, there we go. I'm back. Yay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so not the most helpful. That's it. But anyway, some websites, you know. Um, Right, I'll see if, let me just see if there's any more about it. Bit annoying. Yes. Asking if I'm legally okay. No. So, all down to me then. No help on there. Must, must be a newish uh, creation. Like I've said, the Saddlers um, Company. I'm really impressed with them. Uh, their Peaky Blinders uh, brand, uh, a black IPA, um, a Christmas pudding start they bought out at Christmas was divine. Um, their Mud City Stout, their collaboration with Krabby's to make the Krabby Stout was absolutely bang on. And I think the Krabby's IPA was another collaboration with um, Krabby's and them. Um, 
and they also do the, the full range of whiskies and gins and whatnot. So they really are, and I think it's an evolution for for British brewers now. Uh, with the gin explosion, and it has it is a massive explosion with gin. Uh, it's not normal gin. A lot of it, a lot of it's fruit liqueur gins. So the, the name gin doesn't really come into it. To be fair, because they're just basically just fruit liqueurs. So like when you get a rhubarb and uh, I don't know rhubarb and ginger gin. It's actually a rhubarb and ginger liqueur. The gin bit doesn't really matter. Put that to one side. Same with the palm of violet. It's a palm of violet liqueur. Don't you know a lot of people? I was the same way. I won't touch it because it's the name gin. Because normal gin is as rancid and nasty as they come, and it's a woman's drink. But and that's my view. Someone's bound to say, no, it's not a woman's drink, you know. And I've got mates who I used to take the mickey out of because of it. But, um, yeah, with gins, uh, I went to Menorca on holiday back in 2016. I went to a gin distillery. And, yeah, basically, like, three bars. No, four bars. And you walked into this shop. And uh, you've got the bit where the bloke sits or the woman sits uh, selling it to you. And then you've got four tasting tables. That was it, four. And there's about 30 different liqueur, gin liqueurs on these tables. Everything from peppermint, you name it, they had it. And we went in sober, totally sober, come out wobbling, you know, like, Whoa. with a bottle of gin as well, you know. Probably drank a bottle of gin while I was in there. But, uh, you know, amazing. And even then you could tell that gin was going to be massive. And their gin's world famous in Menorca. And now it's just massive over here. And obviously you get into the stage also where people, you know, are cottoning onto this themselves and buying their own stills, air stills. I mean, I don't know about the legality of it or I'm not interested in the legality. You know, if you're brewing it for yourself, I, don't, I can't see any problems whatsoever regardless of what, you know, what the law says. But people are buying their own air stills now. And all the gins, these flavours of gins are all coming in to the, um, for it to make yourself. So, um, I mean, for me, I had a little, um, their plum and cinnamon gin at Christmas. And, oh, it was absolutely the dogs, you know. But anyway, let's get back to the lager. You go from Saddlers to, to Gin, and then you're back to this. So, for a lager, uh, the head's dissipating now. Still carbonating quite nicely. So, it's, it's, there's a malty aroma to it. Light malt aroma. Uh, a typical lager, lager-ish aroma. There's some hops in the taste. Um, there's a smoothness to it. I would say it's a better tasting lager than um, your likes of, um, you know, your Carlings and all them standard lagers. It's oh, certainly a better tasting. I will say this is at room temperature. Lagers are supposed to be drank chilled. So, you know. I'm probably not getting the full bang for my book, as it were, from it. But saying that, you know, not a bad lager, really. Um, some of these craft lagers are tasting more like beers. This to me is like lager with, with the addition of hops. It's not lager with flavour added, like some, like the Bira Moretti, Siciliano or the Toscana. Um, but it, there is some hops there and the hops are making a difference. It brings that evolution of lager, you know, into like the real ales where, you know, over the years it's just, the dis diversification is massive. And now with the, these lagers, these craft lagers, they're trying to do the same thing to lager to bring lager into the into the modern age. You know, a beer drinking. Um, whether the supermarkets all all like that because 
they probably will because with these you're going to be buying by the bottle with carling and them you buy by the crates mostly no one buys that by the bottle you know you can't get them so um you know it might be that craft lagers get their own section because they never used to world lagers always had their section but there were no craft lagers three years ago at Sainsbury's when I was there. None. But now, you know, things have changed. Right. So, out of five, it was a good effort. Um, I wouldn't say it's as nice as Heineken. Heineken's probably my favourite... Heineken, Estrella are my favourite normal lagers, you know, as it were, uh, premium lagers, and uh, certainly better than the Peronis, and Cor especially Corona. God God knows why that's so popular. Pff, mystifies me. Um, sat this Sadler's, it gets itself close to um, uh, Heineken, to me. So, I'm going to give it a 4.2 out of 5. Not quite the high ranked as one or two of the lagers that I've reviewed have got, but a good uh, a good entrant, entry into that world of craft lagers. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Right, thanks for watching. See you soon.